Uh, button mother fluffers. Let's have a look. Boom. <coughs> there we go. Now then, in usual fashion, I'm just going to double check. We, we are, are on. We are we are live in color. New gadget on. Yes, baby. There it is. On a weekend that brought you, well, a week that brought you unbelievable arm wrestling entertainment. And that was just John and Ozzy's show. <laughs> we also had the WAF Worlds. Yeah. Yeah. What a mate. Turkey played host to the WAF Worlds. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, show 127 of the fix. And tonight, the main focus of our discussion is going to be the WAF World Championships. For those of you who don't know or have been living under a rock, my two guests are usual suspects when it comes to this show. The first of them hails from Canada. He is, in fact, a Yank of Minnesota origin, and his name is Uncle John. Jonathan Thompson, ladies and gents, in a mother-fluffing house. Usually got less of a beard than that. He's letting it go. It's quite impressive, that, John. Going deep. And it seems a little darker than usual, mate. I'm just, I'm in a brooding state of mind today. I, not, I, I, I pull it out of you. I've just, I never drive anywhere, right? I work mm -hmm. at home. I do things at home. And I went into <laughs> civilization today by myself in oh, a shit. motor vehicle. And I almost murdered 17 people. Wow. So now I'm just at home in the dark, trying to be calm. Chilling. You say yeah, into that in a moment because you're talking to a man who knows about rage. And he's the next of our guests, ladies and gentlemen. His name is Engin, the Enigma of Rage Terzi, and he is in the home nation of the WAF Worlds, Turkey. Are you back in back in your hometown now, Engin? Yeah, yeah. How um, far is that from where the worlds took place, mate? Um, with plane, less than one and a half hour. With driving ten hours, but I came by plane this morning. No, not too bad. And uh, how are the cats while well, you've been away? Have you got cats in the house there, mate? Or just cats. the strays outside? Cats? Yeah, you said you had a lot of strays outside that you take in and feed. Well, outside, yes, but I don't have it. <clears throat> Not in the problem. house. And, and then she died after she died. Oh. I don't have courage to have another one because that hurt me so much when she died. I know how that feels. Mm. I know how that feels. I had the same with the dogs, mate. I didn't have cats, but I had a couple of dogs exactly the same. Yeah, when, 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 the Uncle, Uncle, when Uncle John said that he almost killed six, 17 people, should we get it like he he he, he killed already 16, but almost 17? Or <laughs> Yes. Run with that. Run with Run. that. Please do. So, John, you can't leave it there, mate. What a way to start the show. What <laughs> happened? What happened, dude? Well, it's just when you when you don't engage with humans for uh, for extended periods of time. And then you're brought into civilization, and then you must witness and experience the stupidity levels of the human being. <laughs> what the hell happened? It's just the, the way, okay, so there's a rule in Nova Scotia. That is a rule when you drive uh, that's only here. That It's the only place I've ever seen it. Right. But the rule is when you're <laughs> going to make a turn, the way you turn is you slam on your brake as hard as you can. And then you put your blinker on, and then you go as slow as humanly possible through the inter 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 intersection. And everybody, that's the way everybody does it. That's the way they all do it. Oh, and, can you imagine uh, that in Turkey? <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't fly. Look, there's a lot of great things about Atlantic Canada. The driving is not one of them. You got so much room as well. It's not like you're. It's not like incredible you're for space or anything like that. You can space out over there. Hundreds of feet, hundreds of feet. Parking lots as far as you can see. I park at the back of the parking lot. I come out, <coughs> we're all around me. People parked all around me, right? Whole yeah, parking really? lot. They don't they just flock to me. I can't help it. Hey, Engin, have you ever had a road rage incident in Turkey? Have you ever been out driving and been like, you know what? That's it. Not this. And been really upset by something that's happened driving. Let, let's talk about arm wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he actually Fair killed enough. the 17 people. Just before we start, guys, I had a couple of super chats in. Thank you very much for everybody who super chats. Really helps us out. Devon's classy finger. 
He's what we are live. Let's go. Yes, mates. We had Caleb Williams in. Caleb Williams in with a super chat. But right off the bat, we need Hermes versus Dave predictions from each of you with a score mm. prediction. Mate, that will be coming up. If you think we'd have got to the end of this show, it wouldn't have happened. We've got Engin on the goddamn call. Engin setting these matches up. He would definitely have thrown that in. It would have been like three minutes from the end of the show. I'd have gone. We'd have been on for an hour and 90 minutes or something. And I'd have gone, Engin, we're going to bed. And Engin would be like, one more question. <laughs> That's what would have happened. Living now since with a with a super chat. Thanks, mate. He's put booyah. Love you, Neil. Keep it real. Thanks, brother. Really appreciate it. Ryan's exposed cable back in with another one. He's put Uncle John collects kids' toys. What's on the they're show? not they're not kids' toys. They're they're collectibles. <laughs> collectibles. <laughs> they're increasing in value. It's an investment. Yes, this is Caleb an Williams investment. with another super chat. An investment. He's put, Thoughts on John Brzezink saying Devon Larratt is number two. All things we can get into. All things we can get into, guys. As <laughs> so, first of all, WAF Worlds. Engin, were you happy with the Worlds in Turkey, mate? What was your overall impression of the show? Um, to be honest, you know, I'm a WAF guy. Mm -hmm. I see WAF as like my family. That's 30 years. Sure. Same as you. Uh, but Without Georgians and Russians, a lot, a lot missing. <clears throat> yeah. You know, no, no, no disrespect to the winners. It's not their fault or something. Maybe they would have won anyways. But I mean, you know, the, what Russians and Georgians means. And and um, if they were part of it, of course that you know they would also get a lot of golds, silvers, and bronzes. So without them, it is sad, sad to see. You know, like if if anyone out there, they're good, but they don't plan to compete. Well, I understand. Mm -hmm. But if there are people who want to compete, but they cannot compete because of some reasons. Um, and I'm not blaming anyone for this, that it does, didn't happen. You know? But but what I'm just saying that without the Georgians and Russians, you know, um, things are missing. You know my point. You know what I mean. You understand. I don't mean to disrespect anyone, but mm -hmm. but they, sh if they were part of it, it would be even. I mean, it was great, but yeah. it would be even much greater. Yeah, the the whole uh, split and absenteeism of a couple of the main nations, for obvious reasons, in one case, um, <clears throat> is very very difficult because. Like you say, it would be great if everybody was back together and we could do, get the whole of the world in one place, at one event in the way it used to be. Um, how long it's going to be before we do see that again? I really don't know. About the split, you know, of course, that we are a big family all together, our missing. But but some countries, when if you're talking about if a split, it mm -hmm. did not really affect the results, you know. But if you are talking about Russia and Georgia, it means a lot, you know. Huge. The, yeah. the, the main legs are, you know, Kazakhstan, Russia, Georgia, um, uh, Kazakhstan, Russia, Georgia, and Turkey, and you know, Bulgaria, Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know, and some other countries. These are like very strong nations. Yes. About the uh, medal. Yeah. So it, it is not like, you know, some other country missing. When you say Russia and Georgia, especially like Russia, both male and female arm wrestling. Yeah. And Georgia, lately was female arm wrestling too. They were very good, getting very good. But especially male arm wrestling, very strong nations. I don't know. I hope someday we will be all together again. Uh, again, you know, I'm not blaming anyone for some decisions or something. I'm just, as an arm wrestling fan, I just would hope like that, you know, this was an event when every best athlete was present and then, then we could see who is winning. You know, I'm not saying that those guys who won wouldn't win or something, you know, but but we, we know that, you know, if there are Russians and Georgians, the, the results will not be the same exact what it was two no. days ago. No, I mean, if you... you... You know, you can pick a number of classes where you would think that the 
favourite in the class would be quite nailed on. And I even want to say that some of the guys would probably have chosen a different class if the Russians had been present. I mean, the the one that springs to mind immediately is any class where Alan Zulayev is involved because you would think that he can choose his class a little bit around that weight, anywhere from sort of 75, 80 kilos. Uh, and I don't know where Alan Zulayev's weight would be right now, but he looks, from what I've seen over the last few years, the dominant arm wrestler at that weight in the world. I mean, he really looks ridiculous. Some of the some of the stuff that and, and some of the class of athlete that he's run through uh, is remarkable. You he know, and others the same. Arthur, he and Arthur had their matches total of it took more than two minutes. It was not that dominant, but he had the control. But and Arthur they, obviously they, also they from were, Russia. They both were one head above the rest. They both, yeah, I mean Arthur Makarov and him Alan Zole pulled near a minute. Yeah. And Zolev lost with two fouls. And then he came to B-side after one minute match. He still convincingly beat Yanis mm-hmm. after a minute long war. And Yanis was sent to B-side by Arthur. It also was a very convincing win. So they, they both were ahead, but Alan was, you know, you know, he had the control, but he had a hard time to finish it. Another thing, like 110 kilo. I mean, Sandris looked incredible good, but there needs to be Ivan Matushenko. We thought Ivan Matushenko. And last year, there was another guy. What was his name? I forgot. The the, the Russian guy with those oh. blue, like light blue eyes. Uh, Artem Grishin or? Grishin. Yeah, Grishin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, how can you, I mean, without them? But of course, but I will tell you something. San, yeah. Sandris look incredible. Mate, I'm going to say I thought Sandris was... <clears throat> blindingly unlucky not to be double world champion. Yeah, what happened there? What was the whole... I have no idea how it happened. Called on a f- after the fact, there was a protest. <coughs> about so Sandris, the... Sandris went, this is right hand. No, she's left hand. This is left hand. And yeah, Sandris... so Sandris is the world champion on the right. Yeah. But after the fact, on the left hand, he was called for a foul in a losing position losing position so he lost the match automatic and they looked at it looked back at the video and he fouled when he was in a broke back rick's position on the b side which is deemed as a losing position regardless of the fact that in the next match which he won (coughs) from that same position so well i mean this is an organization that doesn't even have a rule to take care of king's move right it's just a strange decision that I, I just don't like the whole foul and losing position thing. I don't, you know, I think I understand where they're going with that, but it's just a little bit. Uh, it's a shame when you see things, particularly evidenced by things like that, where you see something that's then decided after the fact on a foul. When we saw what happened in pins, got to be honest, I'd feel a little uncomfortable as, a, as an athlete winning a thing like that. Oh yeah, I won the world championship. Let me show you the video. Yeah. Okay, no, I didn't. Let's not show you the video because I got whipped. You know, it just wouldn't sit with me. I, I don't know. But <coughs> listen, everybody views it different. <coughs> but I, th- I do feel like uh, I do feel like Sandris was very, very unfortunate not to come away from that double world champion. Did how much of it did you catch, John? Did you get a lot of the WAF? Did you watch much of the WAF? I know you had some no, guys. No, not, not at all. I'm, I've kept no secret that I, you know. <clears throat> My interest in arm wrestling is not necessarily designed for a WAF slash IFA sit down and watch the tournament. I love to watch my friends. Like I'll watch Sandris because I know Sandris. Chris Stops. I was super happy for Chris Stops. He pulled like a animal this this that week. Um, So I'll watch people I know, but I'm not necessarily. I, I am not as interested as most people are in finding out who the world champion is. Mm-hmm. I want to find out who's going to entertain me the most next. And that, that might be the same guy. It might be the same guy, but WAF is just something that I, I appreciate. I think it should be here. Just doesn't, doesn't turn me on so much. Would it, if it was presented differently, John? Could be, could be like if they gave, if it wasn't just, okay, here's a live stream. Watch this for 8,000 hours. Mm. You know, it, it's just, it's, I don't know if it's designed for that because there's so many matches. There's just so much going on and so much to take in. Um, but if somebody could figure out a way to make me like it, 
then that's probably the way. I'll tell you that. Okay, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna have to say, just give you an idea of what a what a what a peen ass I am. What a <laughs> stato. I had. I shit you not. I have three phones and an iPad with different tables on in front of me. <laughs> me was like going seven and then closing going six and then closing going eight. Just following, yeah, just so quickly, you know. Um, yeah. I, I, I will not, I will not, um, I don't know. That That so, is the toughest event in the world, especially between yeah, 55 to 90 kilo, especially even 100 kilo this year was Incredible tough. Oh, the, yeah. Unfortunately, Ongarbeev got ill after he won. Yeah, I was going to ask arm. why didn't Ongarbeev go right hand? Yeah, he, yeah. he was on the list. He, he was in incredible shape with left arm, his weaker yeah. arm. He didn't feel anyone. He did like this to anyone. Right arm, uh, he, he got ill. You know, I asked Mazgan why he didn't come. He said, We can't even lift his head from the bed. You know, he just, I don't know what happened. Maybe, I don't know. I got ill too. Did we catch what? COVID, or I don't know, I checked today, it was negative, but mm. sometimes it shows positive a few days uh, later. I don't know if I get normal flu or COVID, but some people, yeah, because a lot of people, it was uh, 1,600, no, 1,069 competitors. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people in one place, yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about some of the sort of performances. We had some shocks in there as well. I mean, shock of the tournament for, for you. And we can talk about a couple of instances here. I mean, I had uh, Real Ipinge message you me, oh, my God, Chris Stapps just beats Terracetis, Mindugas. Left arm. Left arm. Yeah. Now, shocking, amazing. What, you know, I know that Ray was sort of like, wow, unbelievable. Yeah. What about Talgat and beating Jock? All it got beat by Talga. I mean, ah, give me your take on that, Engin. Okay, first match when they met at the uh, qualification round, they the match didn't even start. Mm -hmm. They said that Oleg moved, and then okay. the match didn't even start. Oleg lost on fouls. After that, Oleg just did this to everyone, including to uh, Akte. Um, yeah. Well, got active in the okay. first first final. Yeah, he just hold him. They went strap, and then he hold him and did like this. Yeah. And then the second second start, a lot of people think that you know he was not really squared, and he started ready. Some people says that way. Some people, but whatever you know, and looked like Oleg Zok couldn't even have a chance to move. He, he was mm -hmm. he caught him here. And his pronator was already under control, and he hit him one more time. His elbow went down, and Akte won. So <laughs> it would be, a, I mean, like once Oleg gets his position, the match is it's over. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the only thing is that you know you you must not sleep. So mm. Akte won. <coughs> yeah, if you're gonna sleep with anybody, not tell that. My God, Bojidar and Viorel Dobrin had a very tough match with left arm. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, For very most of the match, match Bojirar winning the match in the winning position. And I was very surprised, very surprised, actually, to see Vero pull back from that position. I thought it was done. And then, to, you know, I last him to the side. Then when it turned in, obviously, Bojir had committed so hard to the top roll, he couldn't get his hook. He was just... Exhausted and couldn't get back on his bowling line. Lost the match. There is, a, there is a personal, little bit personal issue there as well. They mm -hmm. had a super match in Romania. Not really personal, personal, but they had a super match in Romania where Viorel beat him 3-2 or something, you know. Okay. And uh, Viorel beat him. Bojidar wasn't happy with the referee. And yeah, probably last year. And now they had chance to pull again. It was like to prove that, you know, Bojidar and Viorel, what, what happened a year before, so, but still Viorel ended up um, winning. It's funny you should say that, Engin, because I kid you not, I can open my phone right now and show you that I've got those two, two guys noted down in a battleground and they face each other first round of the battleground. For real. Got that penned in. Love that match. I think it's a really, really good match. But... 
after that. <coughs> yeah. It was done, yeah. But he looked incredible on the right hand. Ah, there is one Turkish guy, young guy. He won the youth category. Mm -hmm. His name is Burak. And he, first round, I saw him with, probably first round, with uh, Raimonds. He beat Raimonds flash pin. And then he pulled Bojidar. Bojidar get him in, in the hook. He couldn't finish him. He hit him, hit him, hit him. He couldn't. He was that far. I don't even think that it was a pin, but they finally called a pin. But Bojidar was just like dying. And after that, even after that tough, tough match, Bojidar didn't have any match. He did no, he destroyed like everyone. Yeah, but, but just watch that match against the young Turkish guy. This young Turkish guy, only a few months ago, the Europeans beat Viorad mm -hmm. Dobrin as well. Wow. Yeah, and Viorad Dobrin was the current world champion. Yes, and when you and when you say champion. young, how old are we talking here? If he's in the juniors, are we 20, talking 21? 20 probably. 20 years old. 20 or 21, yeah. Wow. You yeah. wonder where yeah. the, these guys are going to go. I mean, my God, when they're puppies like that, unbelievable. How old is Kristaps? I think Chris Stapps now is 19, isn't he? 19, yeah. And Chris mm. Stapps has great genetic. I mean, at the Iron House, that was so clear just where his level is. Uh, and he's a baby. Can you imagine that dude? You can't even fathom what he's going to be like at 30. Can you? It's just going to be absolutely ridiculous. And being around so much talent, being around Yanis, yes. Ray, Sandris, you know, it's just... and constantly surrounded by these top-class arm wrestlers traveling as much as he does. I mean, my God. Let's talk about the future's bright. Let's knock over a couple of super chats. Uh, Living Niles hints. Just come in with a super chat for you, Engin. He's put, hello, Engin. Where do you think the arm wrestling sport goes if I come in? Question mark. What's uh, that, the last thing, last word? <clears throat> Living Niles hints. And he's put, hello, Engin. Where do you think the arm wrestling sport goes if I come in, hmm. if I come in, yeah. Who is living hmm. Nile Tints? What's that mean? Know. What do you mean if I come in? Yeah, I'm if, lost. If I'm living Nile Tints starts arm wrestling, where will the sport go? Yeah, living Nile Tints. Who is that? Is that a puller we should know? Hmm. Let me. I mean, Nick, if, if it comes to arm wrestling, it, it, it will rock the world and. Probably will become to the UFC level, you know. That's my answer. There Living now since, are you Danny Tesh in disguise? <laughs> so it could be. What if it's Tesh, Engin? Holy, get him on the boat. Either Tesh or Alexi Woywoda. Yeah, it's one of them too. Mm. So Silky Wilkie, thanks for your super chat, mate. He's coming and put evening, gents, and congrats, Sandris. Let's talk about Sandris Sedis for a minute. Because yeah. Sandris Sedis is in the ascendancy, isn't he? I mean, the man is in the ascendancy. Because let's just break this down. When you talk about Sandris, 90% of the time you think top roller who's got a lethally fast press. He showed so much more this weekend. The side pressure was on point. Horsepower, horsepower, incredible horsepower sideways. Yes. Side pressure was on point. He was hitting the hook, dragging from there, losing his wrist and still being... Really aggressive. Neil, Neil, there is not much to say. He beat Alexander Getalo in hook. Not much to say. Exactly no. that. I mean... Yeah. Amazing. So, I Engen, was... uh, Engen, I know you mentioned this in one of your community posts, and I, and I agree with you a lot. Like, that match with Matt Mask, after I saw Sandris at Worlds, the match mm. with Matt Mask is really really exciting it was exciting yeah. before but now i'm i'm like okay After I saw matt against krasimir I, I said that matt is gonna top roll and beat sandris in, in me i was thinking yeah. that i never said to anyone because i'm the organizer but since my opinion changed i can say openly that that match can go either way you know mm -hmm. and i don't think it's gonna be easy way. even if matt takes the risk of sandris i, I think he, he will still resist I don't think that, but if, if he somehow hooks uh, Matt, he's, he's going to beat him pretty bad, you know, if, if yeah. he can. So the, the, the question is, can he control him or Matt is going to take his wrist? But even if he takes his wrist, I don't think Sandris at this point 
is someone that you can easily beat just because you took his wrist. No. Yeah. And, and, and Matt has to be cautious directionally on the hit because one of Matt's lethal weapons is the pace, is the speed. And he can hit so good off the B side. He's brilliant there. And that's to me, is by far his biggest weapon in this match because he can pretty much expose anybody's hand and wrist by doing that. And, he's, and, and Matt's hand and wrist is great. Um, he's such an exciting puller, so explosive. With Matt now, I think he must be looking at that performance this weekend and think, oh, okay, I've got to be a bit more cautious here in terms of how fast I accelerate and drive quickly for the pin. He needs to make sure he controls hand and wrist before he goes to the side. Yes, because yes. if he doesn't have that, it's really dangerous. Yeah. The other thing is, Sandris's press, that fast press, is another really dangerous weapon because he can sort of probably sacrifice a little there if he hits that press, loses some arm position, he still possibly has the superior arm strength. So that match, just for me, the stock has risen. I think it's a great match. I think Matt, Matt as you said, needs to secure by taking Sanders wrist and then mm. go, go there. But just remember, once you do this, you also allow the other guy to put the shoulder behind and then, then we will see. I have seen Tatashin's beating Matt without um, wrist, but I don't know if Sanders can do that, but even he cannot yeah. beat him, I don't think it will be so easy, Matt, to go to um, pin. Have you have your let's let's go with you first, John. From what you saw this weekend, I mean, first of all, how did you have that match before, Matt and Sandris? Where did you see the balance? Yeah, I was I was kind of because we we've had conversations about Sandris. I've had conversations with a lot of people about Sandris ever since you know I met him at Iron House, and I was I was kind of putting him, you know, I like oh I'd love to see him against you know John Brzezink. Yeah, I thought you know that might be a great match, and then I was like. Man, mask Matt Mask is really, really big. He's really, really explosive. But and so I, I was leaning much more towards Matt. But god dang, you know, Sandris just looks better every time. Every time he goes out, every time we see him, he shows us more. He yeah. shows us that he can do different things. It's not just one thing or another. Like he is very scary in a lot of positions. So this is one, you know, I always got to have a little bit of a corner for Matt because Canada, but I do know Sandris fairly well and he is my buddy. So I'm just really looking forward to a bloodbath in that one. I it, hope it's, it's-, it, it's so interesting now, isn't it? That match is taking another, it's taking another dimension. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it might be my favorite match on the card. Yeah. Genuinely. What, do you think that Sanders has enough experience under big lights versus mega elite dudes, especially ones like Matt Mask, who's going to be like, F this, blah, 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 like really, really wild. Do you think that's even an issue for Sanders? I, I, I don't think that he will be intimidated. I don't think. Um, these are guys that um, uh, usually don't express themselves loud. Mm-hmm. But but mentally they are strong guys. Like for example, Prudnik didn't give a shit, you know. Like yeah. when this happened, you understand? I I'm not sure if if Sanders is, but Sanders just remember, right a few meters away there will be Yanis and, and Ray. Ray yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I he will not be alone there. So no. The, and if, if, if about Yanis, Yanis is. I mean, very, very experienced guy. And I don't think that he will be intimidated. I mean, uh, Matt needs to just win the match. You know, I don't think that Sanders will be intimidated by all that going on. I think he will even make him more angry and then, okay, just say go and let me let me show him, you know, mm-hmm. typo thing, you know. I don't think that mentally he will be any affected, but... Um, but maybe he never pulled someone like Matt. You know, he had two super matches here. So far, one is Chan Show, the other one is <coughs> and Chan Show is a young guy, he's very good, but not yeah. as experienced, you know. And Lachlan is also from Australia. He doesn't have really this level of uh, competition history enough. Yeah. So Sandris was the one who is more experienced compared to them. But here 
But just remember, Sandris has been pulling Zloty tour, he has been pulling WAF and Europeans, yeah. and really you learn a lot, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So it will be interesting experience for both pullers. Here's a a strange dynamic for you to both consider, guys. I mean, I think everybody when they look at this match. Oh, before I go down this route, I'm not trying to set you up here, Ingen, but before I go down that route, first of all, let me just get your sort of balance of power in terms of how you saw that match. If you're okay to, to do that, who started as the favourite in your eyes prior to Wath and has that changed? So did you see Matt as the favourite? Did you see Sanders as the favourite? And have you changed your opinions at all? Okay, okay. After August 7, I will tell you honestly, in August... Prudnik was not anywhere close to his best shape. The, uh, no, I'm talking about May event, May, mm -hmm. when he pulled Matt. And Prudnik's shape against Tatashings was much higher than the time that he pulled against Matt. Yeah. He was just right, right, the, the war started, you understand? And many things, I don't want to get involved. So the guy didn't come at his best against Matt. Mm -hmm. So him to beat Matt like that showed me that Matt also is was far from his best. So both were in bad shape, and but Prudnik had a dominant win against him. So, but Matt told me, Engin, invite me one more time, and I will prove myself. <coughs> and I said, okay, but you promised me that you're gonna you are not gonna come like this. He said, don't mm -hmm. worry about it. Okay, I believe him. And people, whenever I invited him again they were like oh, why are you inviting him he's done and this and then i said no i, I trust him you know he, he will he will if he's coming here he's not gonna make the same mistake you know even if he loses he's gonna come in a very good shape that he will mm -hmm. not be like last time so i i um, set him the match but whenever i set the match he, i asked him time to time like, have you been trained he said like sometimes i think he said twice a day or something he said and he's trained every morning he said mm -hmm. And he's in good shape, so I believe him. And then whenever I saw him pulling against Krasimir, you know, we are thinking, yes, Krasimir is not as he used to be or something, where he just won the war force. We will talk about the category a little bit later. Yes, mate. Okay for you. But he won the war. And Matt, after I see the way that he beat Krasimir, it, to me it seemed like even more dominant than the, the Iraq they had against uh, mm -hmm. Grasimir. So I'm like, okay, this guy is uh, incredible shape and he, he still has two months and Matt is going to come here very strong. And and I thought that Matt was the favorite. I saw it like 55, 45 in my mind. But mm -hmm. after I saw here, Sandris, how explosive he is, how his joint pressure, you know, inner, you know, side pressure or straight or outside, you know, the guy has so much horsepower to this way. Mm. And even he had a very bad draw with left arm. And he still managed to reach to the top, you know, and then it ended up second with after the decision. Yep. But it is not that easy to pin that guy. So I think I think like <clears throat> Matt, Matt must not make any mistake. Because in my opinion, Sandris has more horsepower. So Matt really needs to unable Sanders, you know, applying his power. He needs yeah. to take everything, everything. Yeah, I really, really get. I really get that. I, I think that that's. <clears throat> I think he's got to run the the knife edge a little bit there, Matt. He's got to make sure he's got to be a little bit more cal calculated because, on occasion, Matt's explosivity is so high that he just blasts at people. If he mm. does that and he gets caught up. It's a problem. And what, where I was going before, I think everybody believes like Matt's going to be the guy that initiates and he's going to go blasting into Sandris and Sandris is going to chase him, try and hang on to him. <coughs> Do you think there is a chance? Because Sandris is six foot five, he's a big lad, big hands, long forearm. Do you think there's a chance that he top rolls counter at Matt and tries to fight fire with fire? Do you think that is something we could see? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sandris can go a any anywhere. If if he if he sees that Matt is risking so much, uh, his hand just not to get hooked, and then Sandris can directly go outside too. The worst case, they will go to strap. But I mean, I'm telling you, 
there is only one way for Mets to win, while Sanders has minimum three ways. One is out, one is in, and one is even press. Yeah. Yeah, and he can. <coughs> Let's say the match was pretty balanced in terms of the strap. Let's say that both men look to counter. So both men hit with the reverse on the top roll. You would favour Matt. I would favour Matt to gain hand and wrist control. But in a way, there could potentially be an option there for that to be sold by Sandris just as a way to get the brakes on. To slow Matt down so he doesn't outrun his own hand. And as he starts to outrun his own hand, if he stretches his hand and wrist out, Matt puts the brakes on. And from there, Sandris can go on the offensive in, like you say, a number of different ways. And it's going to be interesting to see whether he chooses to do that because that's a, that's a real option. I always feel like you're in danger if you chase Matt. If you go after Matt, he's a good chance he's going to light you up because he's so fast and such a big man. I mean, Matt, for, for anybody who's not met Matt Mask in person, Matt is a big man. Frame. His frame is huge. Sandy is so fast. very explosive. Sandy is also very explosive. Yes. And he, he's very tall. His reach is, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, he can go for a defensive hook and just uh, try well, to... This is, I mean, this is what interests me with, with Matt, him. Matt goes for the pin instead of taking the risk. And if he goes and he can catch him, even if he catches him here, trust me, he's going to bring it. Yeah, so I would think so. He needs to neutralize Sanders to win that match. But yeah. again, as you said, if they both go outside, even if Sanders loses his wrist, as long as he has his pronator, he can still yeah. hit sideways. So what, what, what Matt needs to do, if both are going topple, Matt taking the hand may not be enough. He also needs to a little bit control the pronator of mm -hmm. Sandri. So this way, he may not be able to. But if he has here, then it is something different. So mm -hmm. he needs to control Sandri's pronator as well with his wrist. Yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I mean, it's <coughs> all guys, speculation. Do you guys think there's much of a chance we see any significance outside of a strap? Or is this likely going to a strap? And then that's when we're going to see all this stuff happen. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Because that's where does, you know, it's whether Sandris is prepared to chase or whether he's prepared to jump into the press. And maybe he goes for that kind of option very early. Because if he can match Matt's pace and can secure the press, you would think it's over. Mm -hmm. It's a safe bet for him. You know what I mean? If he can just get to the press enough, even if it stops, as Engin says, anywhere in that bottom third, I still think he's got the arm strength to pull back. So for me, if if I was in Sandris's corner, I'm thinking that he wants to make sure that he doesn't get totally neutralised. If Matt blasts your hand and then can secure position, either controls a little bit the hand and wrist position. I think at any kind of second hit from Matt would be lethal. Also, mm. if he climbs, lethal. So he just needs to make sure that that he contains Matt and puts the brakes on him. I think if he gets the brakes on, Sandris is favourite. I think uh, Matt's as dangerous as it gets off the start. And one thing that also interests me about this match is Sandris is usually the, the tall guy in the match. Mm -hmm. Usually the long guy in the match. Right. That's interesting because that can throw that can throw you badly. You know, <coughs> you're used to pulling guys who have <coughs> shorter arms. You pull a different way, and when you're suddenly pulling a guy who's so much longer, so much taller, it can be a little bit of nuance, and it just throws you out of your game. And I wonder how he'll deal with that, and how many guys. I'm trying to think now how many guys Sandris would have pulled regularly who are even similar to Matt. There aren't many out there. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to sort of uh, emulate him, isn't it? Unique human. Yeah, really is. Really, really unique dude. 27 days to find out. Yeah, yeah, it ain't bloody long, is it? Right. It is yep. not long. Now, yep. <clears throat> let's just talk about a couple of the other outstanding performances. <laughs> who was your sort of arm wrestler of the tournament, mate? For me, it probably was Sandris. Ali, Ali Jam Murado weighing oh, 90 with the left kilo. arm. I mean, 90, 92 kilo and winning the super heavyweight. Is that all he, he was? 92. I thought he was like he 100. Was, he was he was 101 kilo on the 
scale with fully closed and a lot of like maybe four or five liters drinking water, you know, because he needs to be over 100 kilo. He, they can only put one category above theirs. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I, I talked with his uh, trainer and he is also a master's uh, world champion in mm. grandmasters in 90 kilo. Um, so he said he is 92 kilo in the morning. Yeah. And this guy just went there and, you know. Yeah, more tough, just day, an absolute bad beast. Bad day for the WAP super heavyweights, you know. Yeah, the guy was in, incredibly impressive. The other guy who I thought was excellent uh, was uh, Ronald uh, Masik, who pulled the juniors, won both arms, uh, and then went into the seniors. And didn't he finish silver medal behind... Um, left arm. Left arm, yes. I mean, what a beast that is. Yeah. Where the hell is he going to be in a couple of years? I mean, wow. Just frightening. There's so much talent coming through now. So much talent in these young men. It's just completely unbelievable. Uh, I think the right arm was in interesting. Yeah. The, you know, right arm, it was so interesting. Uh, Petro Marcarin beats Krasimir. Yeah. Total of two stars and together more than half a minute they pulled. And then he sent Krasimir to the B side. And then Margarin and Ozan Kochak, they pulled right after that match. And mm -hmm. Margarin, even he had a half minute match, he still couch. And but he had lost both times on elbow foul. And he went to the B side, and there he also lost. And then he's the one who beat Krasimir. And Krasimir ended up with gold medal. Yeah. And Pedro Margarin took fifth place. Um, so Paseka, Paseka uh, beat Kochak, and but Krasimir beat Paseka twice in the <laughs> final. So yeah. it was just and imagine if there was also Ongarbayev there, it would be even more interesting. Yeah, it's a great shame we didn't see Ongarbayev. I mean, from what you saw on the left arm, you would have to favor Ongarbayev on the right this, arm. This basically. is his weaker arm. Left arm is his weaker arm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to see anybody stopping him, won't it, really? I mean, you'd have better form. Maybe, maybe Petro Margarin. Fresh for fresh. Because his wrist is incredible. When he pulled Rewaz in 2018, he beat him like... Because his wrist is so strong. To beat mm. Petro, you really need to go deep hook in a defensive position, position and tire him, tire him, tire him, and, and then beat him it is like almost impossible to get the better position with the start because his wrist is incredibly strong yeah you know he's how, so how thick big, in the joints i mean you look you'll you have to look how big, big how big the hand of andre Kipiano, right mm -hmm. his hand is just like he sent me today a picture they he and petro Margarin was in the antali airport he sent a picture they did like this his his hand is just much wider than uh andre's yeah yeah, he's just like huge hand and very strong cup and maybe even the strongest in his category. His, his joints and structure is massive. Just naturally massive. Like I say, he looks like a like a big farm boy. Only just thick, really big, thick joints. And But I'll tell you what, in the first start of the right arm with Krasimir, their the first uh, start of their match, Krasimir was looking good. And then there, there was the foul, and they restarted, and Krasi never got the position again. But the first, no, 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 no. I think really solid. In, in the first start, I think Petro beat him, yeah. but they gave foul. Pe Petro was beating him, but I don't think he would have beaten him without the foul. I don't know. We'll see. It looked to me like Krasimir was getting a really solid position, and he looked no, comfortable. No, no. I mean, when the match started, <laughs> foul, I think Petro pinned him. You know, and I don't, know, I didn't even see where the foul was. Probably off the elbow. I think yeah. off the back of the pad with the elbow, I think. I, I don't know what it was, but but the, even the second start, he exhausted and uh, beat Krasimir, and Krasimir came back and won. It's, it's a great job he did, you know. I mean, this hey. is a double elimination tournament, you know. Who, who cares that you beat someone mm -hmm. first time, you know. You need to end Finish up winning, winning, yeah. I, I, I was really pleased to see Krasimir get a win. Uh, I really like Krasimir. He's a great dude. And he's had a bit of a rough run recently. 
and it was really nice to see him get a win, you know? Yeah, I agree. It was it was really nice. So, so well done, Krasimir. Brilliant, mate. Who was uh, who was your favourite world champion? Who was the guy you thought was most impressive or you were happy, most happy about seeing uh, win the Worlds? I'm <laughs> I mean, the truth is there are um, youth guy, you know, he, he won the 70 kilo left arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Turkish guy, he's, he's, his hand is like, not like Zox, but like bigger than his right. He's also another freak, you know, he's 19 years old and he just convincingly beat everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting. Another thing, that 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 seventy five kilo, um, Aydar Khanmon from Kazakhstan. Second was uh, Daniel Prokopchuk. Yep, they had some battles, but mm -hmm. we need to consider that uh, Daniel had a very tough match with Mindaugas. Yes, Mindaugas took his wrist and everything, and then you know, and then after this match, I asked Daniel like. Daniel, you took second place in 75 kilo. Yeah. And now <clears throat> in one month, you're going to have a super match in 85 kilo, East versus West, WAF title against um, <coughs> Samusha. Me. Oh, like, okay. You're on Daniel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you want to, like, I mean, think again. You know, he said, no, no, no. And he said, like, super match and tournament is different. You know, he said that he had a, Tough match with uh, Mindaugas, and it, it really affected his results. Uh, and also, Daniel is a good inside puller, and mm -hmm. Samusha is an inside puller as well. Not like a professional about couple like Mindaugas is. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm surprised that you know, in the semi final, he still beat Yanis convincingly. Yes, uh, Daniel. Yeah, he had a very he had tough. Uh, also, Yanis said Yanis and. Murat Warhan from Turkey. Uh, we they had a very long match. They had some match. Yanis won on fouls, and then I think there was a protest. They play again. It was a very tough match. Hey, Christo Delijakov gave Yanis fits earlier on as well. Yeah, I mean, did did I not see Risto beating Yanis? Who couldn't beat him? No, right? No, he lost. Didn't beat oh, him, yeah, but he, he came. Under. Yanis yeah. came under and then lift him, lift him, and yes, he, but he he, he didn't yeah, he didn't yeah. beat him, but he. Gave him serious trouble. Yeah. Put some yeah, real yeah, burns. Yeah. Yanis won. Yanis won. <clears throat> Yanis won, yeah. Yeah. But he was bloody close, mate. Really, did really I, close. Did I see correctly that uh, Cobra Rhodes' opponent at East versus West got a gold in yes, Masters and Grandmasters? The hated yeah, Gildil. Hated Gildil. Yeah. Grandmasters, yeah. In Grandmasters, yeah. 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 So he's, he's looking good. No. no. <laughs> that, that category is... Um, uh, it's not but, huge. Yeah. Can, can, no disrespect, but it can't be compared with the senior senior. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Some of the some of the masters category is really 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 tough, you mm -hmm. know, because some guys from the past that had done great things in seniors now posing masters, but some of them are not. Of course, the category was tough, but we can compare anything with Cobra yeah. even. Today's Cobra, you know, we can't. Uh, yeah. And that's Cobra, interesting. Cobra was, yeah, Cobra was asking me, oh, he's now more worried about that match. And <laughs> I said, I mean, Cobra, it's not like, and Haida didn't even do any single table time. He, he started training two months ago when I offered him, and he didn't do even any table time. I love Gildil. Haida is the nicest dude. He's, in it. he's a home. great bloke. Super understated. Have you, have you ever met Ira Gildil, John? Mm -mm. He's the most quiet, humble guy you can possibly... <laughs> honestly, him him and uh, Niazi are just awesome. So it's a great foil to Cobra, right? This yeah. flip side of the coin. <laughs> the most understated, super quiet, humble. You, you, you just, you know... I mean, he's like a human biscuit. The guy yeah. is... Just a, just a really nice dude, yeah. mate. So, Cobra, yeah, it is the Antichrist. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Cobra's going to be all, all energy. Yeah. I offer a match to someone from the past about the legend category. Mm -hmm. Gary Jennings. 
Oh my God, Jerry oh. Janet. Jesus, I haven't seen Jerry Janet. Is Jerry even like active around the play? I haven't seen Jerry at, at an event. He had some issues with his left side. It is affecting his right side to train, but generally before that, I don't know what happened to his left side, but he needs to have some operation or something, but mm. he was very fit for his age, very, very fit. And he's, I believe, over 80 kilo, maybe 90 kilo, 85, 90. So at 90 kilo, he and Niazi would be. Bloody hell, vice grip, Jerry Janning. I ain't seen yeah. him in years. Good puller in his day, mate, bad man. Bad man in his day, Jerry yeah. Janin. Hope yeah. he's well. Yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, Matt Tickle, my limit, Larry, just come in with a, a super chat. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. But I love this show and I love arm wrestling. So many great events out there and so much talent. Keep being awesome. You all are the best. Almost as cool as Coach Ray on Arm Wars. Wow. He's fun to watch, mate. Doesn't get any cooler. <laughs> Ray's a specialist, isn't he? Jeez, yeah. he's, he's a specialist. He's special. He's he's a different different breed. <clears throat> in that kind of environment, Ray is hard to beat. Yeah, Ray is really hard yeah. to beat in that kind of environment. He's he's seasoned himself to the six rounds. It's his home. That That's a clip, great... <laughs> that clip where he gives the crowd the look after he turns the match around. That one's gonna live really? forever. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome, wasn't it? It was absolute quality. Have you seen that yet, Engin? Oh, class. Yeah. When you get a chance, check out the Arm War show from Friday night. Brilliant. Yeah. Coach Ray John Terrian, final of the battleground. Amazing stuff, mate. Absolute quality. Just have a look at that when you get a chance. It's great. Oh, it's an, it's yeah. a screamer, mate. <coughs> really good stuff. So White Wolf with a super chat. Mate, how are you doing? He's put Sup Neil, John, and Engin. Uh, Matt has been saying that moving forward, that he was going to be fighting hard for the setup, unlike past matches and whatever. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, that's interesting. That is interesting. Get your camcorders ready because it sounds like it might get dicey up front. Well, I mean, there's certain guys that just don't push it in that environment, you know, and I suppose with Matt, he's never needed to because he's got such a massive hand, so much range. He not really need to do that. John never really fought much on the setups, you know. Mm -hmm. It's funny, isn't it? I don't know. I guess is, is that, it is it a is it a difference in mentality between getting what you want versus making sure your opponent doesn't have anything they want. I feel like those are kind of different perspectives. On yeah, that. because I'm not sure that Sandris <coughs> is going to be difficult to set up with. I don't yeah, think Sandris always, is going to. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be trying any fiddlery. You know, I think he's just going to go in there. Opponent. It depends on opponent. Sandris mm -hmm. has been pulling at WAF. So at WAF, you, you know, you know, <coughs> like not only him, his opponent also needs to be careful to not yes. to foul out or something. But but if he has an opponent like Matt, he may also be problematic because if his opponent wants to do something, <laughs> Sandris will also not allow, you understand? Yeah, that'll be it's an interesting dynamic, White Wolf, because as I say, I I don't think Matt's going to have too much problem setting up with Sandris. I just don't see that happening. Watch this. They'll fight like Frigg all the way through. But I, I really don't think, genuinely don't think it's going to be hard for him to set up unless Matt's going in there to genuinely just cause him problems, you know, just going to yeah. try and throw him out of his game by being super aggressive. I don't know. Engin makes a good point. It's the, about your opponent and what your opponent does. And yeah. I do feel like... Um, I don't think he's going to get too much shit from, from Sanders. I think Sanders yeah, will go up there fair as you like. not going to do things yeah. like Brud Brudnik did, you understand? No. So I, I think if, if both wants to have a <coughs> fair set, set up, they, they will get it. For yep. sure. I agree, mate. Yeah. Uh, so hey, soon. guys, I got I to gotta run, but I just want to say Dave Chafee's going to win. <laughs> yeah, we'll come on to that in a moment. All right, see you guys later. John, thanks, brother. Much appreciated. Have a good one. So, Silky Wilkie just come in with a super chat. He's put, Matt has his eyes on Irakli ever since he's given him a smack. Sandris is a contender for both of these guys, even though Irakli said that's who he needs to beat to face him. Yeah, very different kettle of fish to uh, Irakli. Sandris is much more measured, uh, much more dimensions, just different dimensions entirely to, to Irakli. Uh, very interesting. 
But I think Sandris is a, in some ways, an even more dangerous opponent than Irakli for Matt. It's less fire with fire and more fire with various yeah, weapons. Irak, Irak, Irak will have Ungar Bev in January. Oh, mate, what a... Okay, now that's a match, right? That's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> that's a match, that is, isn't it? What a match, that is! <laughs> top roll versus top roll. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> that's a great match, mate. I love that one. So Silky Wilkie's coming with another super chat. Massive one, mate. Thank you very much for... <laughs> that really helps us. He's put, how does training differ between weight classes? Is there a tendency towards certain pulling styles as the weight goes up? You want to take that on, Engin? Uh, in, in my opinion, um, when the weight goes heavier, I think we see more of outside pulling because when the weight goes up, it is building more on the arm power. While, like, when you gain 30 kilo, I mean, it puts more to arm, but not as much as to the hand. And still gets stronger, too, you understand? Mm -hmm. But you can see more. So, after a point, we need the both guys are getting, all guys are getting heavier. So, the arm power is too much for hands to. And also, in my opinion, when it is getting heavier, it is becoming more of, you know, back pressure versus back pressure uh, matches in a super, is my opinion. Do you think uh, there's a tendency to be less reliant on technique for a lot of guys as they get bigger? What's that? Do you think a lot of guys are less reliant on technique as they get bigger and more just looking to get tied to a guy and, and, and swing for the fences? Because... There's a certain level of power that it's hard to beat. You said like technique, you know, to me, my understanding of like a good technique is the hand control. Mm -hmm. So that, that is why I'm telling you that the hand control is getting harder when the horsepower... Let's put it in another way. What about technical range? So you think they would be less likely to specialize in training a lot of different styles of arm wrestling and go more Monotechnical, go towards one superpower. Yeah, I mean, just, just, I mean, if you just think about it this way, Levon, what's his technique? Generally, outside. Mm -hmm. Laletin, Hermes, Dave Chaffee used to be side pressure, but now outer side pressure. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if I mentioned Alex Kurdecha. So, what I'm just saying, what I'm just saying that. Like that Zaur guy, like for example, Arif. Yeah. I mean, there are some hook pullers too, but what I'm just saying, mostly after the point, it is like they are kind of cutting hops on their hand strength. And it is more going to do back pressure versus back pressure loading. Yeah. Who is, who is his back pressure is stronger. You understand? The, the yeah. hand doesn't go as parallel with arm strength when the when the weight is getting you know heavy so that is why it is easy a human hand to control <coughs> a lightweight middleweight even up to like some heavyweight back pressure but when it becomes super heavyweight it is getting harder just remember alan Carre was the same way alexi Voivoda was the same way mm -hmm. um remember 94 cliff dean gary goodrich you know yeah, I mean, you understand. After a point, it's getting kind of hard to con have hand control at that weight. Sure, yeah, hundred percent agree, mate. So we got Silky Wilky with another super chat. He's come up and said, "Engin, um, you need to check the chalk bowl before the match to see if Matt has laced it uh, with training rice to pump his hand up." <laughs> yeah, uh, he well, Matt trains a lot, doesn't he, with the old rice bucket? You know, the yeah. old twisting in yeah. there and. Busting his hand up. He's uh, he's got a really impressive hand and wrist. Uh injures it a lot actually, but it's a very, very impressive weapon. There's no doubt about that. He's a beast. Uh I mate, I love that match. I think that's gonna be one of the most entertaining matches on that card. And it's a solid card. There's some great matches on there, but that's a biggie. Uh Living Niles hints with another super chat. He's put Silky Wilkie. There is no matter uh in technical application 
when in different weights. So responding to the earlier super chat of Silky Wilkie. Now then, Engin, you've had to change your car, but it's quite a change. Hermes, Dave Chafee. Wow. Where the, did that come from? I mean, obviously, we hear Jerry's got injured. How did it come about? Did it was it quick? Was it a quick decision that you you got on to, to Dave to replace that? Um I only <clears throat> that financially, um because we already made I don't want to go into details. It it was not super good for me. You understand this is what I say. Okay. But I cared about community reaction. So if Hermes, I would set someone from the <coughs> east, it wouldn't be as exciting for the fans. Mm -hmm. And with the previous win that they had over La Latin, and many people had been asking, we want to see Chefi versus Hermes. I was telling at some point it's going to happen. Understand? And so I asked Dave, and of course, we made an agreement, and then he accepted to pull Hermes. Hermes wasn't so sure, not because he wasn't in super shape. He said he's, he's incredible. He would pull anyone, but he made all strategy for Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Now he had to change. And he said, Engin, I'm ready to pull anyone except maybe not Levan yet. But I need to know this as soon as possible. So we waited for Jerry to have the MRI results, but it takes some little bit longer, a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And Hermes, like, right, I mean, he had the right to complain because he needed to know because he has to change the training. And and also Dave also had the disadvantage because he is just like accepting a match 32 days or something before. Um before the event. But the only thing is that people say that, oh, you know, they didn't train well for this or something, but I will tell you something. His match with Laletin was better than any kind of uh, training. If you think that it wasn't a good training, it was a good training. Is he in any way uh, damaged from it? Did he have any injuries from that match? No, he's, he's fine. He's fine. He wanted to just take a general rest. And in fact, he was planning to come to East versus West in January. Okay. And now, yeah, but at least, you know, like not the same technique, but mm -hmm. at least Dave's opponents, like at the king of the table, and now both are outside pullers, both Hermes and Laletti. Not the same exact way, but they both go outside. And, but for Hermes, he was training for, Jerry, and now he needs to train for that. So I can say that um, it's very good match, you know, very good match. And I think Dave is well rested and he's gonna, I mean, we cannot tell him, we cannot say that, you know, he's not trained. That match, again, it was incredible training. And if he's recovered, which he says he is, and now he only needs to just train three more weeks, very good, and then just. Well, Hermes, and I also told Hermes, Hermes is thinking that it could be tougher for him. But uh, Hermes also knows that if he cannot beat Dave Chaffee, it will mean that he's not ready for Levan. Here's a question for you, mate. Do you, who, who's, who's, do you think <coughs> Hermes is under more pressure or Dave in this situation? And I'll tell you why I ask. Hermes. Hermes. Because yeah, well, Hermes, is this a harder match, do you think, for Hermes stylistically than Jerry was? Because Jerry's a puzzle, isn't he? I, I, I don't know. I saw Jerry some trainings before he got injured. Jerry has never looked to me any stronger than how he looks right now. Mm. Oh, he's focused, isn't he? he? Not focused, only when he was... Um, I mean, he, of course, it was, I saw him with Eduardo Tiete, which mm -hmm. is probably 90 kilo guy, but the way that he was holding him, the way that he was putting, 
I mean, it was just like maybe feeling like 20% or 30% or something, you know. He didn't have to do anything. He was just going sideways like this, yeah. but like he was holding nothing, you know. And Tiet is and, strong. He's got a great arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it could be a hard day for both of them. I don't think it would be easy day, especially in, in strap. But now Dave Sheffy also is, I mean, we haven't seen Hermes pulling someone like Jerry. In mm -hmm. fact, there is no one like Jerry. Um, but unique. We haven't seen Jerry uh, Hermes losing, I don't know, getting hooked or this. We have seen him lately losing only against Alex Kurdecha, which was a top role. Yeah. And Dave Chaffee, when Alex, when they went outside, they was able to win that match. So if, if Hermes wants to win, he needs to also control Dave's tornado. If, if they both go outside versus outside like this, if both trees are like flat, I, I'm, I believe Dave has more chance to win. See, Dave is applying this power with his pronade. So Hermes, while doing this, he also needs to control a little bit. So if if Dave cannot have his wrist, but also have a little bit losing pronade, yeah. he may not be able to apply the pressure. But if he has here, and if both trees are flat, I think Dave's side pressure will be stronger than Hermes's. Um, potentially, <laughs> potentially an easier match for Dave than the match he's just had. Because if you look at Hermes and you look at Lalatin, you would say that Vitaly represented possibly a more difficult ask for Dave just because of the length of arm, mm -hmm. that arc, that position, and the defensive threat. I think Dave, if Dave can win the A-side with Hermes, I believe that he has a better chance to beat Hermes than he did have with uh, Lalatin. The danger from Hermes is that pace off the start. He's so fast. You know, there's no balance point. There's no reaction point with him there. He's not pulling you off the counter. He's going to try and blast you to the pad. But it's a really good opportunity for Hermes, isn't it, in some ways, because if he if he beats Dave... He beat the guy that just beat the guy. You know what I mean? So it steps him up that ladder. <coughs> it's just whether he wants the match with Lavan. I mean, who the hell really wants that match yet? I don't know. He says he is in incredible shape. He believes he can beat anyone. But when we talk about the start, we are talking about two guys that have incredible starts mm. because of Hermes being so explosive and because of Dave Chaffee being so powerful right from center to here. Yeah. So being only quick may not be enough, as we saw with Alex Burdecha example. You know, he was quicker, but still they was stronger. And so I really don't know. But I if I was Hermes, I would try to control the first. I would have this once he cannot have this, if both is like this, I, I don't see Hermes winning like this. No. Dave has been more experienced about losing the wrist a little bit, but still pinning. While I, I don't remember Hermes beating anyone like this, Hermes likes to have everything, you know, and then and then pin the guy. So he needs to have the risk, risk control. I'm focusing on that. In that case, who do you think the strap favors? I mean, that match is going to go strap anyways. I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to be... I don't think any of these guys will have enough hand to control each other's uh, back pressure. So mm -hmm. everything I say is like I'm imagining... You're picturing it in the strap. Strap, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think the start is unbelievably important for Hermes. Unbelievably important. He's got to nail the starts. Cannot afford to slip up on the start. Because if it turns into an ugly match, I think Dave's got that winning ugly card dialed in from, just proved it this weekend doesn't it well uh, the other weekend from one side um i think that jerry to get prepared for jerry mm -hmm. help hermes for dave match because hermes was training for that the center yeah it's a whole center instead of this because you go like this you are like this with jerry mm -hmm. you have to have this bottom side and center so he trained it a lot, as far as I know. And that's 
center solidness, you know, just yep. I think it's very necessary to slow down Dave this one mm -hmm. because I don't think that I don't think Dave can control Hermes Pronator like this. So there is only one way that. Hermes either gonna control Dave's tornado a little bit, or they will stay flat. If they stay flat, I think Dave is the edge. Yeah, slightly. Obviously, he's a bigger frame as well. Dave's a bigger man. Uh, Hermes obviously come up through the weight classes, big, powerful lad, but doesn't necessarily have the same frame that Dave has. He's got that natural size advantage, and I think that could be important here. I think that could be a big, uh, a big I factor. Think they will go posi for position, while they will go for direct pin. So I think maybe Hermes can stop him here if he can have some risk. If his wrist is like this, he will go pat. If his wrist is like this, he will stop him. And once he stops him, he can, you know. Yeah. The one thing that I think Dave's just ticked his box on. Really, everybody may have thought that Dave didn't have the stamina because he's lost matches in the past where he's been accu accused of gassing out. I thought he went to the bank in the in the Latin match. I mean, my God, he really dug deep. Absolutely yeah, we went out on his shield. You've got to take your hats off today for that. We need to consider this way as well, that um, like Dave Stamina, did Dave Stamina go up or Dave added something different which became fresh when mm -hmm. his old way got exhausted so i think that he, he he got exhausted in his usual way and then he added this one so that is why you, you understand what i mean yes like in, his normal way of winning was <coughs> again you know yeah. out of option after a certain point but he, he made a new way and then that 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 works. I think Dave is evolving, and he's kind of one of those guys that's evolving his style from competition, which is fair enough because a lot of people can't really train with Dave Chafee and put him in that kind of situation. So he's kind of learning his game through being more battle hardened in actual matches. You know, maybe that doesn't make it you're not as polished, but his muscle memory and learning the position. Uh, it's becoming really effective. And I think he's had a couple of great road tests from Alex Kadecha and Vitaly Lalatin, which probably stand him in really good stead for Hermes. Hermes is obviously a very different kettle of fish in the, in the style. He's nearer to Alex in some ways than he is to Vitaly, you know. But I think this is a... a I hope Dave is, like you say, 100% fit and he doesn't have... He's not banged up at all because that was a brutal encounter that he had with Lalatin. So I just hope... There's nothing sort of under the surface that he's not really aware of that comes out from somebody who hits as aggressively and as hard as as uh, Hermes. If both men come through injury free, I think it could be another screamer. It has been more than three weeks that they pulled. He's yeah, and they've got what another four. He still has four more weeks. Mm. I, th I think I think that if if he had any kind of injury type of thing, he wouldn't accept the match. Maybe the not. Thing, probably, the only thing he had probably is some like soreness. And then in three weeks, I don't think there is any soreness that would, would stay uh, three weeks. The, 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 the most dangerous part is that right now, if, if they bring someone to do uh, pin pads, now he has the, the, the shoulder pressure option, yeah. which is very dangerous for any guy who goes down to here. And relying on uh, yeah, brachyradialis because even if he cannot beat you, he's coming back and then putting his shoulder behind mm. and he's putting extra pressure on your brachyradialis, which is already tired while uh, trying to handle the the outside top roll of the guy, yeah. and then suddenly something like he put his whole body over your arm, and then there's impossible. I mean, the you two. And yeah, he's got he's got unbelievable horsepower as well. He's got to be in the top. Yeah. I mean, for, for for raw top end horsepower, he's without question in the top five guys on earth. In he? I mean, he is monster strong. So that's what will happen. It is sometimes you know the possibilities, but you can't really estimate 
the the strength, you know. And mm -hmm. we will see. We don't know where Hermes is right now. We don't know where. I mean, we know some about where Davis, but we don't know where Hermes is right now. But he said that he has never been this strong before. And as I said, he knows that he needs to be Dave because, I mean, if he's not good enough, he was going to pull Jerry. But beating Jerry doesn't prove a lot against Lewan. You understand no. the outcome? Because different, Lewan different. is going outside. The way Jerry is going different direction. Could be more different. But Dave going outer side pressure like this, I mean, it's still not exactly the same what Lewan is doing, but still some challenge on your hand and wrist. And if, if, if I mean, no. it is good opportunity for uh, Hermes. Mm -hmm. So because, I mean, if he didn't have this opportunity, he wouldn't know. And then he would pull Lewan. And if he's not ready, they're not going to give Hermes chance all the time to pull Lewan, you know? No, no. Let me try again. Let me try again. So that is even better test for him to see where he is at before pulling uh, Lewan. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it makes sense. It's a logical step without a shadow of a doubt, you know? But I think he needs to come through that impressively to have any... Unless he came through that with dominance, I think he needs to steer clear of Levan. Levan's different gravy, really different individual. Maybe he has some more 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 weapons uh, to save for uh, February. We don't know. Possibly so, mate. Now we got about ten minutes left <clears throat> tonight before we let Engin get some sleep after travelling back. But one more topic that we got on a super chat earlier tonight and that we had to cover: comments this week from the GOAT, John Brzezink, after pulling with Devin Lara at his place in Arizona. Mm -hmm. the, at the moment, he feels he's the second best puller in the world. Um, I believe John. I mean, John, I would never argue about what he says. Mm -hmm. But if John was here, I would just tell him, John, do you think that you also need to train some of, with some of those other candidates to have experience of those guys yeah, i mean the, you you need to train with hermes you need to train with laletin you mm -hmm. need to train with current dave chaffee or the Zaur guy or you yeah. know anyone you need to train with them then then I, i'm i'm not saying that he, he may be wrong i mean he may be right because after the stem cell um the way that devon is uh, performing it is not normal that, that can only be this guy doesn't have any super match plan yet. Mm -hmm. So he is not on any kind of special preparation or anything, you know. But he is performing like different. So there is only one explanation for that that, that stem cell help him. And you people will say, Does stem cell give you power? No, stem cell doesn't give you power. But if you have been pulling for 30 years, mm -hmm. if you have all kind of injuries, mm -hmm. and if you are not able to use those those parts injured parts you know as strong as you could you then then if if it is helping these injuries to heal up then suddenly five percent from there ten percent there fifteen percent there yeah. so now you are like oh okay wow i'm able to use that it doesn't hurt anymore i can perform 100 percent so it is you understand that that is yeah. the only explanation in my opinion Whatever things I am seeing, I am hearing. So this guy, Devon, right now is like very healthy. And, you know, sometimes you to not to have pain doesn't mean that you are healthy. You understand? Yeah. But, but he was saying that he was healthy before Levan match. Yes, I believe him. But that now without any match set for him or something, him to perform like this is not normal. So this guy is with such a knowledge and experience of years and now looks very healthy and imagine that you know if he gets into the serious match you know preparation and focus yeah anything is possible i i i like devon is a threat for anyone mm, well, maybe no. not, not ex and also devon, devon is uh, talking about pulling levon at one point again Devin, I heard that. Yeah, Devin, I heard that. Devon, sorry, but Devon to be taken seriously about the challenge, he needs to clean the, the, 
who is the second place guy. And then people will say, yes, Devon, that is your right. You know, that's your yep. right to have a shot against. But without that, I don't think that um, community will welcome that idea. He needs to do something like beating some of those top players. By the way, a question for you. Who would win? Jerry in a, that, that shape that he was going to put Hermes mm -hmm. versus Devon. <clears throat> I've still got Devon. Because I think that Devon is stylistically a difficult match for Jerry. I think he knows how to pull him, and I think he's so tall and long and so committed that he'd he'd stay, ride the wrist <clears throat> and, and meet Jerry head on. Convincingly, or there may be some <clears throat> don't get me wrong, Jerry's always a threat if he can get you, you know, if he can get you onto the B side, he runs over Devon, but I just don't believe he would. I think Devon's very educated in the style. And the fact that he's as tall as he is, but got the joint strength that he's got, the, 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 he's as jointy as he is and will meet Jerry head on. And also has the experience of Jerry. I think that's a big weapon. And, and, but and Jerry, I mean, Jerry also has experience to pull against Devon as well. Right? Yeah, he does. Jerry is always dangerous, mate. But I, I would have Devon as a favourite in that match. Because I don't think that... Um, I don't think that Devon is a good match for, for Jerry stylistically. I think some of the guys who run a little more are better matches, actually, for him. So you are saying that somehow, if Devon would come to Istanbul to pull Jerry, he would get the East versus West world title? You mean somehow, like if you were to set it up, like any time soon, Engin, that wouldn't sound like you, mate. It could be match number 60 that day. <laughs> it could no, happen, no, dude. Not, 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 not very soon. Not very soon. No. I mean, if it was very soon, Jerry would come and pull Hermes, you know. I kind of hope that Devon <clears throat> takes his time and goes on a bit of a run pulling guys. I mean, I, I've got him lined up to pull Sandra Sedis in arm wars, left and right. I'd like to see that at the 115 weight class. Uh, I know that you've got matches you'd love to see him pull. Uh, and I know that he's eyeing one of those potentially in January, depending on what happens with Hermes, uh, sorry, with uh, Prudnik and Michael. Mega interesting, because I'm sure Michael Todd's planning on running over uh, Yevgeny. We'll see. That's going to be a, that's another match that if you miss that, there's something very wrong with you. I mean, how the hell can anybody even think about missing that match? If it's Christmas, cancel it, watch that match. Did you see that psychopath video? video? <laughs> yeah. You saw that? Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. He was like, Michael. Mm. You saw that? Hey, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> he crashed the you know, house and he says, oh, oh, I I'm sorry, Michael. I don't know what I did, you know. <laughs> and he was just like, you know, so like, I don't know. It's just, I thought I was watching yeah. like, some of those. It's freaking interesting and, match right there. Horror videos, you know, horror mm. movies. You know. That's going to gather momentum. It's going to gather steam. We've had a super chat in from Lagia. He's put support East versus West. Get the pay-per-view. Be a real fan. Mate, <clears throat> if you're not watching these East, East versus West cards, I don't know what to say. They are absolutely stacked with talent. It's going to be ridiculous. I mean, like I said, myself and Engin will be back on here and probably on his channel as well, talking about that stuff for a long period of time. Don't worry about that. As we get a couple of weeks out, we'll probably bore you to death talking about individual matches. So, yeah, <coughs> get ready. Silky Wilkie. Oh, do you think Devon can bleed Vitaly? Oh. That's a difficult... I think Vitaly the Latin is a difficult match for Devon, stylistically. Hard match. <coughs> Very hard match for Devon stylistically. Very hard match. If I was going to pick a guy that I believe is probably the most difficult match for Devon stylistically, it might be the Latin. Very, very hard match for a lot of guys, but Devon's one of those guys because Devon obviously likes to pull on the counter. Uh, that's a hard man to counter against right there. It really is. So another match which it's got to happen at some point. I mean, it's just got to happen, and I'm sure it will happen, and that's another... Huge match, huge match. Can't wait. Uh, living Niles hints with another super chat. He's put if Devon kills his demons, 
He is king. Mate, I think Devon is feeling reinvigorated from what I've seen. He seems really, really up for it. <laughs> Phil, what are you okay? Thanks for your super chat, mate. Much appreciate that. Hope you're well, dude. Yeah, going back to the, the one from uh, Niles there, I, I do believe that Devon's looking really reinvigorated. Uh, he's going on a tear. And I hope, I really hope, that he takes his time getting back to that number one spot or the pursuit of that number one spot and gets matches against some of the guys that we'd love to see him pull against, of whom <laughs> there are so many. Except Termes, who he's bound to duck. <laughs> but other than that, everybody else, you know? And 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 who if Jerry comes to his first stress in January? Who, who What's the injury with Jerry hanging? How bad? Uh, what is it? Some some in, like tears, you know. Some I'm not sure it's measured, but, but you know where? Huh? Do you know where? Elbow, wrist, where, shoulder, where? shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Okay. Yeah. Whenever he was doing bench <coughs> press, he yeah. was doing 545 pounds bench press. As you do. What? As you do. Yeah, just go out and fling a few reps out without no problem, son. Um, so what I just say that who do you think he should pull against? Oh, God. I mean, I'm sick that he's not pulling Hermes because I love that match. Uh, I did. I mean, you know, the one I wanted in Arm Wars was, was him and Kadecha. So you're banned from doing that match. Don't do that one. I'll right. tell you what would be interesting. Morozov. That's interesting. That's pulling Relas now. Interesting match, mate. Down the tracks. Very interesting. Is also in January. Mm. Very interesting match that down the track. Oh, Silky Wilkie with a super chat. He's just come in. Devon Styles seems to be put an opponent in an envelope, tailor made to let them go wherever they want, chasing a carrot, getting exhausted, uh, cordoned off in a playpen where he takes inches, angles, and hand real estate. Yeah, that is pretty much nailing it down. Why I think that that's going to be more difficult with somebody like uh, La Latin is because of the pace off the start and also the height of the arc makes it more difficult for, for, for Devon to get him mastered in that way and to put the brakes on. So that's a really interesting matchup. Stylistically, it's the worst of the matchups for Devon, I think, in my opinion. Um, but I'm sure it'll happen. And can Devon win that match? Yeah, absolutely. He's got, he's got options to win that match. Of course he has. Same sort of thing. If he can put the brakes on, um, he can put some exhaustion on the Latin's arm. But I think there are a lot of good matches out there for him. A lot of good matches. The main thing I'm pleased about is that from everything I hear, Devon's arm is healing up really well and he's starting to get strong again. And that in itself, absolutely tremendous. Really, really pleased to, to hear that because it does give us those matches. Same tra treatment and then he will also be <laughs> stronger. The stem cell thing, you know. Because, John, it would be good that if he gets that extra 10, 15% by, yep. by healing his injuries, you know, it would be incredible. Mate, if you heal up and your back arm wrestling strong, I'm sewing off an ankle tip, sorting this wrist out, starting my ass up. We'll have some fun. Now, guys, I'm going to jump off here now. We're going to let Engin get some rest. We're both dying of a tickly cough. So we're going to get off here. Thank you, everybody, for taking your time to tune into the show tonight. I, I, you know what? I needed to check the chat to see if Ozzy's in here. I ain't seen Jake. If Jake is in here, get over to Jake Ward. Usually goes on after the fix, Ozzy Arm Wrestler. So please get over there and support Jake if he's going on. He usually has a lot to talk about straight off the back of the fix. Uh, apologies if he's not in the chat and isn't going live, but he usually is. Engin, I want to say a massive thanks, mate, to you for, for coming on the show. As always, buddy, as always, great to catch up with you. Great to get your insight and expert knowledge. Uh, and thanks for taking the time out, mate. Really appreciate thank it. You, thank you for inviting and hope to see you on my channel in following uh, weeks. It's got to happen, mate. It's got to happen. We've got a lot of matches to talk about. Ladies and gents, if this is your first time here on the Supernatural Strength channel, please give us a subscription, like, share it. Oh, there you go. Ozzy is in the chat and he is going on. Tremendous. Get over to Jake's in a moment. Remember, if you haven't checked out the Arm Wars show from Friday, get over, check that out. Give us a sub over there also. And until we see you next time here on The Fix, ladies and gents, take it easy, peeps. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Hang in top, man. Thanks, brother.